We live, we love, we serve. I'm going to turn to Exodus 17. Exodus 17, verses 8 through 13. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I said already, I won't be long. I gave you about a seven-minute sermon already. So, Exodus 17, verses 8 through 13. And it reads like this. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some men for us and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with, the, with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. Whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses, his hands grew weary. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the sunset. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. Come on, beloved, let's pray. God, in moments of crisis and even duress, we are reminded that our help comes from you. And in those moments, oh God, where we Lift our eyes to the hills. We're reminded of your presence and your permanence in our lives. So God, in this season, where there are still those with heavy hearts, in this season, when there are those, oh God, who know the bitter dread of sorrow and suffering in this season. While there are those, oh God, who feel as though their backs are against the wall, oh God, thank you for the gentle and small reminders that you are still mindful of us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your love still covers us. Your Kindness still overwhelms us. Your grace still humbles us. Your mercy still astounds us. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being ever mindful of us. God, we're so glad that you being at your best is not dependent on us being at our best. For even when we are not at our best, you still come through. You still show up. You still make ways. You still open doors. And for that, oh God, we say thank you. Have your way on today. Have your way on today. Here's what we'll do, oh God. We'll get out of the way and let you be God all by yourself. We love you, Lord. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And everyone remains standing. Let me read that passage again. Exodus 17, 8 through 13. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some men for us and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary. 
So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and her held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side, so his hands were steady until the sun set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. No matter where you are today, do me a favor. Just turn to your neighbor if you're near somebody who may be watching service with you today in your house and you make sure you tell them, neighbor, I need strength and dignity. Come on, turn to the other neighbor. Just tell them, neighbor, I need strength and dignity. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on today. I need strength and dignity. Very early in life, you learn in a myriad of ways from being a child that no individual makes it in this journey by themselves. All of us at some point in our journey, we realize, we figure out, but more than that, we have experiences that remind us that no one gets far alone. That we, in so many ways, uh, are a combination, not just of the people who love us, but the people who've helped us along the way. If you look back over your life, you can see those moments in your life where certain things started happening that you deemed as successful. Certain ways started coming together. Certain opportunities started manifesting. And you realize that those opportunities, those ways, and those realities happened because there were people in our lives who were committed to us being the best we can possibly be. That is necessary, whether you realize it or not. There is no way you can make it far in this life without a support system, a network of people who are committed to seeing you show up at your very best. And here's the thing. Those people in your lives at times don't always need to be out in the forefront. In fact, there's some people, there's a circle of folk in my life who many people don't even know, but their presence in my life are of such a force and make such an impact that I would not be who I am today without those people in my life. And all of us, whether we understand it fully or not, have those people that we can point to that the world may not know and everyone may not know, but those people and their presence in your life help you to be who God has called you to be. And you would not have reached certain places and pivotal points in your life were it not for those people, like my grandmother would say and the folks of old would say, it wasn't just about presence. They would say things, and you know it because you're a little churchy, that somebody prayed for me. Somebody had me on their mind, took a little time and prayed for me. And then we say, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. And so there are people who help us be our best selves. And then there are people that sometimes we don't even know who are lifting our names up so that we can make it to the point we are now. We always have those people. And what you realize is that that support team, that network, those, those circle of friends, that tribe have a way of showing up again when you need them the most. Have you ever had that experience in your life where you felt that you were maybe at a low place and just at the right time, the right people, people who loved you, came in in such a way and nurtured you back to wholeness? You, you ever had those folk in your life, the people who you didn't always have to call or you didn't always have to text and ask for help, but they sensed something was off in your life and found themselves reaching out to you because they just knew in their spirits that you needed a word, you needed a hug, you needed that affirmation in that season. I know I've had those people in my life, and I've often been mesmerized how just at the right time I get that call, just at the right time I get that message, just at the right time they have a way of showing up. Again, when I'm in that season in my life, possibly in that low place where I need some folk, but here's a 
thing about us sometimes. When we're in those low seasons, in those low places where we're in need of the love and support of people, we don't always verbalize it. That's why God gives people a sense of discernment who sense in those moments that we needed that voice. We needed that word. We needed that hug. We needed that comfort. Somehow we are better because sometimes of the unseen people in our lives who help us be the best we can be. And when they show up in our lives, in those moments that we may categorize as our low moments, we feel a little stronger. We feel a little bit more dignity. We feel better about ourselves. First and foremost, because we realize that we weren't alone in that low moment. We weren't alone in that season. I know for some people it may not mean much, but my God, when you are going through those weary and dreary seasons of discontent and discombobulation, oh my God, it does something to know that you do not walk this way by yourself. I know you know that, and I know you've had those moments where in in your own personal midnight hour, in your own personal storm, in your own fiery furnace, where there's something to be said when you know there's someone with you in the struggle. There's someone by choice who chose to be with you in that moment. And I need you to get that. There are some people who are with you by circumstance but there's some people who choose to be with you in your low moments who make a conscious decision that they will not let you be alone in this moment. And if you know those people in your life every now and again, you got to stop and tell them thank you. I had a friend on last week who called me. One of my other friends and I took a trip and, and well, we, we were playing golf and, and, and we were on the golf course. And while on the golf course, my phone went off. I don't usually answer the phone, but this particular friend called and I picked up the phone, I answered it. And he said to me, he said, bruh, I just want to thank you for being my friend. He didn't understand and he said some other things because I had helped him think through some things at what was a low moment in his life and, and I spoke some words to him and supported him and he didn't know what I was dealing with but, but in that moment when he called me those words, thank you for being a friend, meant the world to me, yes. Because here it is, the people who show up for you every now and again, you got to learn to do what? Show up for them. That's what friendship is about. That's what love is about. Because every now and again, in those low seasons, when you feel weak and confused, you need a little strength and dignity. Now, you may be saying, Pastor Mike, where did that come from? I'm glad you asked. In Exodus 17, this scene is a profound scene. Israel is, has just come out of Egypt and are making their way, well, to the promised land. But in this case, also towards the place that God had called them to in Sinai. And they leave Egypt and along the way, Israel encounters many enemies. One of them and one of those enemies are the Amalekites. And here in chapter 17, the Amalekites muster for war and and, and Moses, the leader, tells Joshua, the warrior, the leader of the, of the warriors, he says, choose some men to go and fight the Amalekites. And Joshua does that. And what Moses tells Joshua is that while you are fighting there in the valley, I will be on the hill. And Moses is there believing that somehow his presence at the scene of the fight will be helpful for the people. And the story is very clear. As Moses stands on that hill, as Joshua and the Israelites fight the Amalekites, that, that when Moses' arms are lifted, 
with that staff of God in his hand. And you have to understand, they had seen those raised arms and that staff do some amazing things. On their way out of Egypt, they saw that staff and those raised arms part seas. They, they were empowered by Moses' staff and the elevation of his arms because every time, whether it was through the various plagues that came through Egypt, whenever they saw Moses and that staff and those arms lifted, they knew God was about to move. And that's what the text says, that when Moses' arms were up, that Israel would prevail in the fight. But when his arms would drop, that the Amalekites would prevail. And the reason why this up and down was taking place, the text says, is because Moses was tired. He was weary. And so he couldn't sustain the strength in his arms to keep his arms up that encouraged Israel to know that God was there. And can you imagine, when his arms were up, Israel would be in power. When his arms were down, the Amalekites would win. And this had to go on for some time. And then those who were around Moses made a decision. They got a stone and they put Moses and told him to sit on the stone so he would be propped up. And then, here's the part I love, his brother Aaron and a man whose name never comes up again, Deacon King, her show up and they go on either side and one lifts the left arm and the other lifts the right arm so that Moses' arms would never fail. And it said that those arms being up and not falling, that Israel, led by Joshua, defeated the Amalekites. And that's the story. There's a little bit more to that. When you peek at this story, you see two things, Sharon, that, that is amazing. Aaron is Moses' brother. But the meaning of Aaron's name means exalted strength. Her who was there assisting Moses, his name in Hebrew means dignity. What are you saying? Every now and again, when you feel weak, when you feel weary, you need a little strength and a little dignity to keep you going. That's all that is. None of us, I started in the beginning saying, we make it this way on our own. And in Moses' case, Moses had his brother and clearly a friend who were willing to be there because they understood in that moment it wasn't about them, it was about Moses because the people were empowered and galvanized by Moses' presence, his show of strength. And in his weak moment, he needed somebody to help him be strong again. Oh my God, have you ever needed an Aaron in your life to make you feel stronger? Have you ever needed a her in your life to make you and help you feel dignified and better about yourself. Of course you have, because you wouldn't have made it this far without people in your life who bolster you up when you need it and who remind you how significant you are so that you stop living with your head held down and you start picking your head up and feeling better about yourself. Everybody needs an Aaron and everybody needs a her and everybody needs a Aaron when you're weak and everybody needs a her when you feel confused about who you are and everybody needs someone to empower them and everyone needs somebody to make them feel better. Everybody needs strength and dignity to make it along our journeys because we don't get this far by our self. We need people who got our back. We need people who are willing to stand with us and even suffer with us if need be. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you may feel as though there's no well, there are no people like that. They are. Because what I realize is that those people are always around. But can I tell you this? You know how Moses could have missed his moment if in that moment of weakness, he would have acted like he didn't need help. If in that moment of weakness, he would have thought, well, I can do it in spite of the evidence saying he couldn't do it, that it would have then had a drastic impact on Israel's ability to win the fight. And sometimes fights are lost because our egos get in the way. 
Sometimes fights are lost because we think we can do it on our own. How many times have we fallen short because we, we excluded people from our lives and thought that we could do it all by ourselves? Oh, no, no. You can recount in your mind right now how many times you fell short, how many times you missed the mark, how many times you imploded because you tried to prove you didn't need anybody. And now you're living in the aftermath of your ego allied with your arrogance. And whenever ego and arrogance get together, Disaster is on the agenda. If Moses had taken that route, it would have meant destruction for God's people. But thank God that although Moses was the liberator, he didn't let the calling go to his head. Thank God that although Moses had this sacred assignment, he realized that he couldn't make it on his own. And thank God that there were people around who didn't wait for Moses to ask for help. I hope you caught that part because the text never says that Moses asked Aaron or called out to her for help. It said when they saw him struggling, they stepped up. Oh my God, I thank God for the people in my own life who when they saw me struggling, pulled me to the side or said a powerful word or who came and symbolically or metaphorically lifted up my left arm and lifted up my other arm because I understood that in that season I needed to be strong, not just for myself, but for others in my life. Oh, I thank God for the Aaron's and the hers, the people who represent strength and dignity, the people who represent empowerment and remembrance. Beloved, don't ever get to a point in this journey where you start believing your own hype. Yeah, I know you've done amazing things, and God knows you have. And I celebrate your accomplishments and how profound you are, but never get so lost in your success that you think you got there on your own. Mm -mm. We have some errands and some hers in our life picked us up in our low place, who poured into us when we were empty, who helped us to show up in ways that we could not show up for on our own. If you with those people right now, when you're around those people, just pause like my friend did that day and gave me the call out of nowhere. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for loving on me. Thank you for caring for me. Thank you for never leaving my side. Because when you have people like that in your life, when those stormy days show up, those rough moments arise, oh my God, you realize that you had love on reserve with your name on it. And there were people who surrounded you with grace. Because every now and again, you need the people who could put the stone underneath you. People who could lift those arms up. And here's the good part. They don't need credit. Their joy is watching your breakthrough. Their joy is watching your elevation. Their joy is being present for your transformation. Don't ever forget that on this journey, every now and again, you need a little strength and a little dignity to make it. Come on, beloved, lean in a little bit. Let's, let's talk to God today. And as I pray today, 
lift up the names of your errands, of your herds. Lift up the names of those people who you can pinpoint the moments had they not showed up, you might have lost your mind. They not only made the call, they, they came over and checked on you. They brought you some food. They, they told you they loved you. They let you know that they would be there for you. Lift those names up, beloved. The people who showed themselves to be friends. Lift their names up, beloved. The people that God sent your way at the right time to be your personal angels. Lift their names up, beloved. And in your own way and in your own time, just tell them thank you for never leaving me. God, we thank you today. We honor you today, oh God. God, we say thank you for something very specific. Thank you for sending people in our lives like Aaron and her. People who don't mind sacrificing themselves for us. People who don't mind helping us show up as our best selves. People who don't mind using their strength so that we can be strong. God, thank you for those people in our lives who represent strength and dignity. As God, the truth is, we, we wouldn't have made it this far without people like that. So God, thank you. Because sending those people our way is yet again evidence that you're still mindful of us, that you still care. So God, just as we have our, our errands and ours, God, help us to not get so self-centered that we then don't become that for other people. Because what good is a relationship that's lopsided? So God, help us to never forget that if we got this far by faith and friends, we then have to be friends to others as well. We thank you, God. We honor you, Lord. And this is our prayer. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, beloved. Listen, I, I got to tell you, and I hope today's message spoke to somebody, but if there's nothing else you get today, those names you lifted up today who've been there for you don't let the sun set today without telling them thank you telling them you love them let them know let them know thank you because when I needed strength you were there when I needed dignity you were there Listen, beloved, I pray that today you enjoy our worship experience. I'm so grateful for the team, for our band, for our worship team. But I'm thankful for all of you who took time today to tune in and be a part of the FCBC worship experience. Tell somebody about your FCBC family. Maybe somebody who needs to hear that word today or this word. Our service will be rebroadcast at 2 p.m. on YouTube. Check it out. But more importantly, and more than that, let gratitude be the pathway to unspeakable joy today. Let your gratitude make way for your joy. Until next time, beloved, much love, peace, and many blessings. God bless.